Hello friends, Mike Adams here with First Person Audio. In a previous video, I showed you how the loop function had changed beginning in, in Audacity version 3.1.0. Well, I'm on 3.1.2 right now, and I want to show you the fix that's been put in in this version of Audacity. Once you've selected a piece of audio to loop, I want to show you how to move it around. And then finally, I want to talk about the difference between the loop function in Audacity and the amount of audio that we hear when we preview an effect, because those are not the same thing. So let's get started. This screen that I have open has an audio file here at the bottom that's unmuted, and I want to use it for the purposes of what we're talking about here right now. Actually, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to move this to the top because I want to be able to see the timeline in reference to it. So let's move this track all the way to the top. And that way it's up there close to the timeline and I can show you exactly what I'm talking about. Now in that previous video that I did, which I believe was what's new in version 3.1.0, I showed you how when we loop a piece of audio, let me get back over here to the music side of this. Let's say I want to select a little piece of audio right here, and I'm going to zoom in so we can get a little bit more granular with it. And I want to listen to that little, let's go over here. I want to listen to this little piece of audio. In that previous video, I showed you how that when you press space bar, it will start there at the beginning of that uh, highlighted area, but it, it would just keep playing on through. Well, now that's not the case. So I'm going to press space bar, and uh, you'll see it play through this selection and then stop when it gets to the end of the selection. Well, that's a little bit short, isn't it? I see now I only picked a half second. Let's grab a little bit more and let's press space bar again. So there it is. It goes all the way through and it stops. That's fixed. Thank you, Audacity, for acting so quickly on that. Again, I'm in version 3.1.2 of Audacity and that's where that fix is. So thank you again, Audacity, for doing that. Now, just a note, remember back in the olden days, we could press shift and, and play or shift spacebar to play, and it would play through that area repeatedly. Well, that's still not the case anymore. Now, if you want to loop through a piece of audio continually until you stop it, you still have to invoke it by pressing either this loop function key up here in the toolbar or by pressing the letter L. And when I press the letter L, a couple of things happen. First of all, it depresses that button up in the toolbar telling me that loop is activated and it sets the loop highlight up there in the uh, time timeline. So now if I press space bar, it's just going to play through and through and through until I tell it to stop. And so you get the idea. Now you can move this. You can grab this and you can move this around and it will move with a highlighted area if you have this option selected. If I control click up here in the timeline, make sure that this option here, enable dragging selection, make sure that that's checked because in my version of Audacity, when I first downloaded this, that was not checked. And let me show you what it does when it's not checked. You can still move it, but the highlighted area stays where it was. So that's not really uh, optimal. Whoops. That's not really optimal for what we're doing. I'm going to move this back up to the top because, hey, it's cheap entertainment, you know, so why not? So now I've got this area selected here. If I want to get rid of that area, I just come back up again and I clear looping region. So let me show you that again since I kind of messed up the audio track there. If we highlight our area, and now we've got the area highlighted, I'm going to press L to set the parameters there. And because I've got that option checked to enable dragging selection, I can move this around now and it will move the highlighted area with it. Not only that, but I can expand that area while it's highlighted. And again, to turn off that loop, you just press L again or go up into the toolbar and turn it off up there with the button. To clear everything out, simply come up and again, I'm on a Mac, so it's control click. In Windows, it, it might be control click, it might be right click, I don't know. But let's clear this looping region. And now the looping region is gone. It's no longer confusing and uh, life is good. That makes sense. So thank you, Audacity, for getting that fix in there quick. This is a real good step toward uh, just better editing practices using Audacity. The next thing that I want to show you is how to use the play at speed 
uh, toolbar with a selection of, with something selected as looped within your file, within your, your waveform. Again, I'm going to grab a little bit longer piece. Didn't realize I was zoomed in so close. So I've selected this area. I'm going to push L to activate the loop. And now if I come up to my play at speed tool, I can increase or decrease this speed. Let's set it up a little bit higher and see what this sounds like. And then if I use this play button, not the play button over here in the transport bar, but the play at speed play button, and I press play, let's listen. Someone had asked that on YouTube, asked me about that, and asked me to uh, demonstrate that. So there it is. Again, if I want to slow the speed down, if I want to do a little more careful editing, and I press play. And so that's how we do that. Now, the last thing that I want to show you is that this area that you've got selected is different than the preview area when you're going to put an effect on it. It's the same, but it's different. So let me show you what I mean. If I come up to the effect drop down uh, menu and I just grab an effect, let's just grab something here. It doesn't really matter what it is. Let's look at this, which is, you know, 100 hertz cutoff or 60 hertz cutoff or whatever it is. This is one of the default uh, filter curves that come with Audacity. If I hit this preview button right now, it will preview that selection of audio. Let's listen. but it doesn't loop through it. It just plays it once and then it stops. If I want to increase the length of time that that preview button previews a piece of audio, it's a little bit different than what I've got selected. So let's cancel out of here and let's come up to our Audacity dropdown uh, menu and let's look at preferences. To change uh, the playback, you simply go into playback and this default length here, it comes at six seconds, I believe. And I think, I could be wrong on this, but I think when you install a new version of Audacity, it defaults back to six seconds. It did on mine, so maybe I'm just special. But I like to keep that a little bit longer. So I have mine set at 12 seconds. If you change yours, make sure that you click OK, not cancel when you get out of here. But I'm gonna hit cancel right now. And then I'm gonna turn off the loop function. And then I'm going to get rid of that area right there. And this time I'm going to select that entire track right there. And I'm going to come back up to the effect drop down window to my filter curve EQ. And I'm going to preview it. And when I preview it, I'm going to get 12 seconds of audio. Nice little tune, no? So that's how that works. And that is different than that loop function. Now, if I come up here and I select some audio that's less than that 12 seconds that I've got, that I've got optioned there in my uh, preferences, and I come back up and I click effect, and I go down to the filter curve again, and I preview it, you can see how long the preview is going to be in a little window that pops up. It defaults to whatever I've got selected. Even if I've got that number set higher, it defaults to whatever I've got highlighted in my waveform. Well, what this allows me to do is grab more audio. If I go from two seconds to 14 seconds, there's basically my 12 seconds of audio. If I take it a little bit further than that, let's see what happens then. If I come back up to my effect window, down to my filter curve, and I'm gonna preview it. If this gets too long, I'll speed up the video right here. So if you notice that in that little window that popped up, the even though I've got more than 12 seconds selected, it only previewed for that 12 seconds, which is better than six seconds for me because I like to listen to what I've got there a little bit longer, especially if I'm doing something like compression or a filter curve. I want to hear more of the audio and get a, a better idea of what it's going to be doing in the entire uh, project that I've got going. So those are just three things I wanted to throw out to you today. Again, thank you Audacity for taking care of that loop feature, that loop function, and getting that taken care of and fixed for us. I appreciate that. And remember, you can use the Play at Speed tool in a looped area of audio. It's very helpful. 
you can either speed it up or you can slow it down depending on what you've got going. And the looped audio function, of course, is different from the preview function when you're putting a, a an effect on your audio. And you change that length of preview by going to preferences like we did into the playback and changing it there. So that's all I have for you in this short video. In the next video, we're going to take a closer look at the label function here within Audacity. You can see again in the screen that I've got open that I've got uh, label overlays in there. But in addition to that, the track itself now has a name. So if you look at that top track, you'll see what I mean. It's, it's a duplicate. It's in there twice. So that will be a good topic for the next video, and I'll make sure that one gets out. Thank you all for uh, following me here on YouTube and on firstpersonaudio.com. I appreciate it. There's a lot more coming your way. So until next time, y'all take care.